High School. Let's take a look at the Atlantic bottling starting lineups. And first of all, for the visitors from Ankeny, two freshmen in their starting lineup in Maddie Manning and Krista Pettipier. And for the Marshalltown Bobcats, it's senior night and a couple of senior starters. Tara Hay, their leading scorer at 12 and a half points a ball game, and Taylor Gaffney. Now let's get our dolls keys to the game, Laura. Well, what Ankeny needs to do is they need to get good movement on offense. They want to swing the ball around the outside of the defense, get some easy baskets, and they need to take away the inside game. Lockhart's a big presence on the inside. They need to take that away. And for Marshalltown, what they need to do is avoid the drought. They have had droughts in games and which has cost them ball games. And they want to get out and pressure everywhere if they can defensively. They want to make their defense become their offense. Bobcats under first year head coach Tim Johnson have lost their last nine ball games. They're three and fifteen. The Hawkeyes have won six of their last seven. They stand 14 and five overall. And the opening tap is going to be controlled by Marshalltown. And a quick drive to the basket results in a quick two for Tara Hay. Well, Tara Hay will do that. She's very quick, both offensively and defensively, and she can take it to the hoop. Now the Hawkeyes on the attack. Mackenzie Meisel gets the ball off on the wing. The shot will go by Bomben into the hands of Maddie Van Meter, and here come the Marshalltown Bobcats. Basically, according to Scott DeYoung, the Ankeny coach, this Marshalltown team has been very competitive for a half. Then their lack of numbers has hurt them. They've worn down a bit in the second half. Well, they've had quarters where they've only scored three and four points. They've hung with a lot of teams uh, throughout the uh, season, but uh, just seem to have that little bit of a scoring drought, which puts them into a bind. Nice move in the lane by Bomben to get the basket and a chance at a three-point play. Great crossover dribble at the free throw line to find the alley and take it all the way to the hoop. And this is a kid that can get to the free throw line a ton. Gaffney got the foul. The rebound is taken down by Taylor Gaffney. And here come the Bobcats. This is the third consecutive game they faced a rated opponent. They've taken out Joaquin Ames the last two ball games. And tonight they get the number six, Hawkeyes. That's a tough schedule. Heck, you, you pick up the schedule and you look at that, and there's no breaks. And uh, you got to credit this Marshalltown team because they're hanging in there and they're hanging tough in, in most ball games. Pettipier gets the ball inside to Manning, who kicks it back out. Now, Egley on the penetration to score. Rihanna Egley, who played on the state champion volleyball team at Ankeny, scores to make it a 4-2 ball game in favor of the Hawkeyes. Now, that's good work right there. Is a nice cut by Egley and a good pass from Bombin. And Egley just kept taking it right to the hoop. He works it outside to Lauren Lockhart. Lockhart, a player to keep your eye on. She gets the ball underneath the basket. Gets Pettipier up into the air and scores. Lockhart did a nice job of waiting for Pettipier to clear by. Got her up in the air and then got it off the glass. Ankeny with an 8-1 and one record in Central Conference play can clinch their second consecutive conference championship with a Friday night win over Southeast Pole. Meisel goes to the baseline. The shot misses. And the ball goes out of bounds and it will belong to Marshalltown. I think they're going to get a foul on uh, Pettipier that time. She was trying to get that rebound, reached right over the top, and uh, didn't really jump, but just her height gave her that advantage, and the official saw it as a foul. Hey, into the offensive end, being guarded by Meisel. Gaffney working against the defensive Bombin. Taking it into the lane is Lockhart, and she draws the foul. Lauren Lockhart, a very active player, very good athlete. Volleyball standout, softball standout, doing a fine job on the basketball court. Well, she works well without the basketball, but she also gets herself in position where she can make some good moves. She's got good footwork down in the block. Bomben gets the foul. Lockhart gets the free throw for her third point. And Scott DeYoung will send Shayla Starkenberg into the lineup, a six-foot freshman. So two freshmen start, and the sixth player is also a freshman on this incredibly young Ankeny ball club. Well, you had mentioned that you're, you would look at that roster and you would think that this would be a rebuilding team, but these freshmen have come in and really done a great job of producing. And Ankeny has a habit of putting freshmen on the court and uh, having very good teams. Pass too tall for Starkenberg. The turnover will give the ball to the Bobcats, who are up by a pair. There's Scott DeYoung, who has a state record six championships all at Ankeny High School. Well, and, and four of those came... The, the start of four of those came with freshmen on the floor, and uh, he just kept winning and winning and winning. So he, he, I know people in Ankeny are probably thinking the same thing with this team. 
Yeah, just kind of a reloading situation at Ankeny under the helm of Scott DeYoung for a lot of years. Yeah, they have always been a force in basketball and softball, and especially basketball back to the days of six on six when Dick Rasmussen was the coach, and it just always seemed like it didn't matter what kind of season Ankeny would have, they would always peak at tournament time and get to the tournament and a lot of times win it. Bombin with her second foul, so the leading scorer on the season for the Hawkettes has to leave the lineup, and Maddie Mullenbrook comes in to take her place, and she is another freshman at 5'7". So four freshmen playing a key role this year for Ankeny. Trying to take it up in the crowd is Gaffney, and she draws the foul. Well, they refer to Taylor Gaffney as the workhorse of this team. She just hangs around, gets second chance opportunities for her team, and just a good nose for the basketball. Manning with a foul, Ankeny committing four fouls early in the ball game, and so Scott DeYoung will take a timeout. Meanwhile, Tim Johnson likes the way his ball club has started. Well, you have to. You gotta like the way they're being aggressive on the floor. They're taking it right at this Ankeny defense. We talked a little bit about how the Ankeny defense is suffocating, and they're doing a good job of trying to get inside and attack, and that's what happens when you attack. You're able to draw fouls on the opponent. Ankeny is averaging nearly 12 steals a ball game. And that, uh, that tells you what kind of defense they play because they communicate very well, they anticipate very well, and that's what we talked about as far as their defense leading to their offense. And both of these teams will like to get out and run a little bit, and all of it relies on their defense. You saw Scott DeYoung, 425 victories in his outstanding 15-year career. As the free throw by Gaffney, her first point of the night, and Marshalltown has doubled up the score on sixth-ranked Ankeny. Gaffney with a season-high 15 against Mason City, drills both free throws, and thus far, the Bobcats are five of six from the free throw line, hence a nine to four advantage. Well, if they can continue to get to the line, that's gonna be a huge advantage for them. Manning directs the offense. Manning now being chased by Gaffney. The skip pass goes to Mullenbrook. Ankeny will be patient, trying to tear apart this Bobcat zone. The shot from over the zone won't go by Michael, and the rebound is run down by Lockhart. Indeed, the score is Gaffney. Gaffney with four first quarter points, and Marshalltown off to a great start on senior night. Credit everything starting there with the 2-3 uh, zone, and then they get out and get the uh, loose ball, run it the other way, and then Ankeny tries to attack, but Marshalltown's gonna sit right in this zone. Ankeny tried to score in transition. Marshalltown defended it well. The missed shot by Manning, and the rebound taken by Emily Hunt. You almost wonder if uh, Ankeny is bothered by this 2-3 zone. They, right now, they look a little out of sorts and aren't sure how to attack it. A being hounded by Michael. Takes a long shot, it's a two-pointer. And Marshalltown's confidence has got to be soaring at this point as they soar to a 13 to four edge. Well, right now they're playing without any fear. It looks like they're very comfortable on the floor and very, very confident. Egley works it on the wing to Mullenbrook. Mullenbrook for three, nothing but net. And that literally was nothing but net. That's all it hit and that was a good looking shot and very patient on the outside and that's how you bust open a zone. You gotta hit those shots from the outside. Just her second three-point basket of the year, but it came at an opportune time for the Hawkettes. Yeah, they absolutely needed that bucket right there. They could not afford another empty trip. Having trouble is Lockhart is able to throw it off the leg of the defender and out of bounds, and Marshalltown will play it on the change in the lineup as Krista Pettapier, who picked up an early foul and went to the bench, now comes back into the lineup. There's Marshalltown coach Tim Johnson in his first year, a native of Colorado, then went to Adams State, but then graduated from Iowa State. Came back home to coach. Yeah, and he was an assistant uh, on the boys' level at the freshman level, and the, the job opened up here on the girls' level. He applied for it, and uh, it's in his hands now, and he's building a program. Only two seniors on this roster for Marshalltown, so he's got a program with a bright future. Foul coming up against the Bobcats. He's on Taylor Gaffney. That'll be her second foul. The only two fouls called against the Bobcats, both against Gaffney. So Marshalltown built a lead of nine. 
The Hawkeyes have cut it down to six and will try to cut it further on this possession. In the middle to Pettipier. And Ankeny has scored five in a row. Krista Pettipier just stayed at the free throw line, worked it as the ball swung from side to side. She just moved with the basketball and that's where you're gonna find a weakness in that 2-3 zone, right there in the gap. Pettipier at 6-1, a nice inside presence. Off the baseline, Lockhart drills it. Six first quarter points for Lauren Lockhart. That was a nice looking jumper, a little fade away with one hand and, and got it to fall. Cut the basket and a chance of a three point play for Maddie Mullenbrook, who's come off the bench for five quick first quarter points. Now you can see Mullenbrook just taking it right at the defense and Lockhart was a little late getting over and got her with the body. Lockhart's foul, her first and the team's third. Mullenbrook misfiring on the free throw, and Tara Hay will bring it up. Lockhart again able to get her hands on the break of Gaffney, able to get her hands on the basketball, off the leg of Manning, and so will be Marcia Town ball. Here comes Rihanna Egley back into the lineup for Ankeny. Well, I think that's the pace that both of these teams would like to play as soon as they get a rebound or whatever it might be. They're going to be pushing the tempo. Hay puts it up with the left hand and scores it. She's got a good looking jumper. It's got a lot of arch on it, but boy, I tell you what, when you get a defender in your face and you can put that much arch on it, nobody's gonna block that shot. Here's an Ankeny team that rarely gives up 40 points in a ball game, and they've given up 17 in the first quarter. Yeah, that uh, is something I'm sure they're gonna discuss at the end of the first quarter, because that's not like Ankeny's defense. In fact, they have held their last seven opponents under 40 points. Well, there again goes back to telling you what kind of defense that Ankeny plays. They really, and that's a lot of what they pride themselves on year in and year out. They will get up and you'll see them at times get out and jump and trap and do whatever they can to, to get the ball to be turned over. Off the baseline, Pet appear on the miss. The offensive rebound is taken by Manning. She'll pull it back outside. The shot goes down by Egley. Egley nails a three-pointer. That just looked like Egley was just hanging around out at the top of the key. They got it to her and she calmly knocked it down. Down the line, hey, she draws the foul. Just amazing the scoring we've seen in this first quarter because usually you see games get off to a little bit of a slow start, but these teams were ready at the get-go. Yeah, they very much were. They were ready to go and you can see this little kick out and Egley just steps up and toes the three-point line and knocks it down. Manning with her second foul as Hay spins home the free throw. She has an eight point first quarter. And Hay knocks down both free throws. This Marshalltown team has not been shooting well at all this year. Back from the line, they're 60%, but tonight they are red hot both from the field and from the free throw line. Uh, and that's what they wanted to do and that's what coach Tim Johnson said they need to avoid the 33 percent shooting night they need to have a bigger shooting night than that no basket Egley fouled hay on the way in well a little pressure from Marshalltown a little three-quarter court and uh, really active on the defensive side causes the turnover Mackenzie Meisel back into the lineup for the Hawkeyes Lockhart Drives the lane, doesn't get the roll, and Pettipier pulls down the rebound. That's a good matchup on the inside, Pettipier and Lockhart. Final minute, first quarter. Plenty of offense in this first quarter. Out of the corner, the shot rims out by Shayla Starkenberg. It seems like it's one shot and done. There's not been a whole lot of second chance opportunities for Ankeny. Hunt puts the ball to the floor, looks inside, and there'll be a foul, a holdout called on Egley, and Rihanna Egley with her second foul. That's already seven team fouls against the Hawkettes in this first quarter. So the rest of the half, they're gonna go to the free throw line and a big opportunity for Marshalltown that they need to take advantage of. And that puts Maddie Van Meter at the line. Had been in a shooting slump, broke out of it on Friday night, got a dozen points against the highly regarded Ames team, the Little Cyclone women ranked fourth in the in the uh, state. And that's uh, some good defense you're going up there against as well against Ames and uh, to be able to knock down shots against them, that says something. She's probably coming out of her shooting slump. 
And Marshalltown really knocking down free throws well in this high scoring first quarter. So again, an Ankeny team that hasn't given up more than 40 points over the last seven games has already given up 21 in this first quarter. Well, you, you're guaranteed that they're not happy about that and uh, they're gonna try to make some adjustments as this game moves along. And trying to drive the baseline was Bombin and she draws the foul. Bauman did a nice job crossover and looked at her lean in to get that contact and uh, draw the official's attention to that. And it's a big foul because it's Gaffney's third. Six seconds in the quarter. The shot by Igley is off the mark. The rebound by the Bobcats. And a three-quarter court shot will not go. But at the end of one period of play, Marshalltown has sent the tempo. The upset-minded Bobcats have the lead at the break by seven. Our score at the end of one, Marshalltown 21 and Ankeny 14. Marshalltown with a late 21 14 at the end of a quarter. Quick look at the top 10 in the state. We talked about Marshalltown playing the third straight rated opponent, and we will get to that top 10 a little bit later, but right now, play is back in the second quarter underway. Marshalltown a terrific first quarter, but they turn it away to start the second quarter. The ball goes back to the Hawkeyes. Well, this is where you have to build momentum and confidence if you're Marshalltown and, and figure you had a great first quarter. You have to build on that. Stay away from that scoring drought. We talked about Ankeny and their outstanding defense. Here's a Marshalltown team averaging 42 points a game and 21 after a quarter. Pettipier calls for the ball, but from behind, it's blocked by Lockhart. Well, they got the setup that they wanted, that's for sure. They got the ball inside to Pettipier, but Lockhart got her from behind, and so that defense still very active. And with that long pass, you can see what the intent of Marshalltown is, run at every opportunity. Sidney Andrew, a 5'7 junior, wears number 33, comes on for the Hawkettes. For the Bobcats, Allison Gimble, number 44, in the lineup for the first time, and that's two early turnovers in the second quarter for the Bobcats who really handled the ball well in the first period. Yeah, they really did, and they ran their offense the way they wanted to, took care of the basketball, and didn't turn it over a whole heck of a lot. Good look at Bria Devine, 5'6 junior, checks in, averaging a little less than a point of all game. Nice baseline pass to Pettapier, and Krista Pettapier with her second hoop, and Ankeny pulls within five. And a good cut into the middle of the zone by Bomba and knew exactly where Pettipier was going to be and just anticipated that pass. A being changed defensively by Michael. One of the things that you admire about the Bobcats in this first half of the ball game so far is though they want to play fast, they have played under control. And sometimes uh, you can get yourself out of control and there's a good look at that pass and just knowing where a teammate is and Setting up on the block, what a great pass from Bombin. But you're right, as far as uh, Marshalltown playing under control with this tempo, that's, uh, that's a credit to them. I'm not sure they've taken what Tim Johnson would consider a bad shot so far. No, I don't think so either. I think that they're really working for their shots, looking for that high percentage shot and uh, getting out and running when they can. Trying to take the ball from Pettipier is Hay. And she gets the foul, and Tara Hay with her first foul. Ankeny continues to stick that ball inside that gap between the two and the three of that zone. And so Marshalltown's going to have to make some adjustments there. Egley goes baseline, and she gets fouled by Gimble. Well, now all of a sudden, Ankeny is the aggressor and taking it at the defense. And Egley puts that ball on the floor, and you can see nice job of turning the shoulders, getting the defense on the backside. Brianna Egley, the only returning starter off last year's 19 and 3 Ankeny Ball Club. She has a quick six points in this ball game, comes in averaging almost 10. That's a good starter to have back, a good person to build around because uh, she's your she's your quarterback, she's your point guard, and, and get your offense set. And she pulls the Hawkettes who have trailed in this ball game by as many as nine, back to within three, closest they've been since the very early stages of the game. Now you can see Ankeny turning up the pressure a little bit, made it a little more difficult for Marshalltown to get the ball down the floor. 
Deflection by Ankeny. The ball comes back to Lockhart. The rebound is taken by Allison Gimbel, and she gets tied up. And the alternating possession will keep it in the Bobcat end. Well, Allison Gimbel is, uh, she's a worker on the inside. She's a kid that didn't play last year and uh, is still adjusting as the season has gone on. By nice inbound pass to Hay. Great look on the inside and a nice little hook shot from Hay. Hay with 11. The Bobcats with a five-point lead and a rebound. Now Bombin trying to slice through the defense and just could not get that ball to fall. Hay takes it to the rack. Does not get the bounce, but does get the rebound. An open look for Devine, but she couldn't get it to go down. Hay with an offensive rebound. Lose the ball in the court, and we've got a tie ball called, and this time it will go to Ankeny. I'm not sure anybody, she's, she's got a smile on her face. I, <laughs> but I don't know if anybody's working harder on the floor than Tara Hay. Good look right between two defenders, and Hay with the good hands was able to crowd that ball and get the ball to fall. Ankeny on the attack. From long range, it is Bombin who set out a lot of the first quarter in foul problems and a nice follow to get the basket by Bombin. Bombin follows her own shot, scores it. Did a nice job of following that shot, knew it was going to be short, and went right after it. Gumbel with a baseline lob, and the shot rolls off by Van Meter. Pen appear with a rebound, the foul caught on the Bobcats. And they whistle it on Allison Gimble. That'll be her second foul. That was a good pass and a good break again by the Bobcats. And you got to finish those off when you have the numbers advantage. Stark and Burke comes back in for Ankeny. And Nicole Fashon comes into the lineup for Marshalltown. She's a 5'11 sophomore. Of course, the Pashong name so well known in Marshalltown. Two brothers were both outstanding quarterbacks for the Bobcats, both playing at Southwest Minnesota right now. Tyler's in football, and Andrew's chosen basketball. Yeah, well, that's a, a good athletic family, and you got to figure there was probably some good basketball games on their driveway. You've got to believe that. The bad news for Marshalltown is that Nicole is the last of the, this family of Pashongs. <laughs> Yeah, you never like to see the end of a line of a good athletic family coming through the ranks. And, uh, you know, when you get used to this, seeing that name and uh, the athletic ability of a family, it's kind of a sad sight to see the last child come through. Good low turnover total in this ball game. It's just been well played. It really has. Both teams t taking care of the basketball. Three-point try. Won't go by Andrew. And the foul on the rebound scrap called against the Hawkettes. Well, Shayla Starkenberg right from behind. You could see it. She, she was being boxed out, gave a little forearm to the back to get position, and uh, got caught. And Scott DeYoung sees his team behind for one of the few times this year. And, and you could see Scott DeYoung say, go around her. Don't go through her. Go around her. Lockhart drops home the free throw. She's three of three from the line and has scored seven points in the game. Tara Hay, who has scored 11 to lead Marshalltown, now comes back in after a brief rest, and Bria Devine goes to the Bobcat bench. And Ankeny will make a change as Mackenzie Meisel back into the lineup. Well, Ank Ankeny and Marshalltown both substituting a fair amount, trying to find the right combination. In that first quarter, Marshalltown hit nine of ten free throws. That time Lockhart going one out of two from the line, so they're still a very impressive ten of twelve from the free throw line. And there is that free throw number. On the other hand, Ankeny not getting there as often, but they've been forced because of the zone to rely on outside shots. Right, and, and that's what a zone does to you, is uh, keeps you on the outside, does not let you get on in, in, in the interior and draw fouls. And uh, you can see a big discrepancy as far as attempts at the free throw line. Manning off the baseline, leaves it long, and the rebound comes down to Emily Hunt. Yeah, that one's a tough one to judge. You figure it's going to come off the rim, and uh, when it doesn't draw anything, you just your timing is all off. That's why she could not corral that. The shot will go by Egley. And the rebound taken down by Emily Hunt. 
Ankeny's only lead was at 4-2. to two. The Bobcats had led by as many as nine. Midway through the second quarter, their lead is four. And a turnover by Marshalltown. Well, credit Mackenzie Meisel that time. She really got up and played tough defense against Hay and almost took it away from her one time, but paused that five-second count. Egley looks at that Bobcat zone, which has been very tough so far. Mullenberg down with the skip pass. Now they find a hole in the middle of the zone, but nothing is going as Starkenberg is by the left. So from outside, the shot by Mullenberg goes down. Mullenbrook has been outstanding shooting the long ball tonight, and she brings Ankeny to within one. Well, they're leaving her alone, so she's pulling the trigger on it. She was one of ten shooting the three ball coming in, but tonight has hit a pair of them. Marshalltown's going to take a timeout and talk about that. They want to try to slow it down a little bit. And we get a look at Maddie Mullenbrook, who has come off the bench and done an outstanding job for the Ankeny Hawkettes. So taking the ball right into the defense, they, they collapsed down just enough so they could kick it out beyond the three-point line, and uh, Mullenbrook knocked it down. And the three-point shooting shows you that Ankeny has obviously taken a lot of three-point shots. Marshalltown has been content to work the ball inside, and they're getting good looks. Yeah, they are. And, and the way they're playing this game, Ankeny is being, they're content to shoot it from the outside against this 2-3 zone of Marshalltown. Marshalltown, on the other hand, they want to run, and they want to get the ball inside, get those high-percentage shots. They're not going to look to a lot of uh, three-point shots here in this game. Ankeny chance to take their first lead since it was 4-2. Gets will use some patience trying to pick apart this Bobcat zone. They work the ball inside. Nice job against the zone, and Starkenberg gets the bucket. Yeah, Starkenberg did a nice job of uh, just following the ball and moving around the lane. And then the Bobcats turn it over. Get a look at the Ankeny work against the zone. Well, they worked it outside, and Starkenberg did a nice job of just sliding down, finding the opening. One thing that never changes, it seems, about Ankeny is the fact that they always have great depth, and Scott DeYoung uses a lot of players, and he's running players in and out, and if you're a Bobcat team, it doesn't have great numbers anyway. It's tough to keep up. It really is, and uh, you can kind of see here late here in the second quarter that Marshalltown's starting to slow things down a little bit, and they're not playing as high a tempo as they were to start the ball game. Bobcats get the basketball with Emily Hunt to inbound. Marshalltown playing for only the second time tonight from behind. Hunt, a 5'6 junior into the offensive end. And the Bobcats will be a little more patient on this possession. I mean, this is really one of the few times that they've had to set up in the half-court offense. They've been out and running. Lockhart will go to the free throw line. The foul will be called on Bombin, and that's her third. Well, that's a, that's a big foul, and uh, she might have to go to the bench and sit for the rest of the quarter. Let's take a look at it and see. And Bombin right there, straight up and down, but you can see she leaned in just enough for the official to call it. Lockhart gets her eighth point. Bombin with the three fouls, leads in favor of Manning. You know, and that's tough to do. You think you're straight up and down, and when that player comes right at you, you want to get there as close as you can to try to block that shot, and you usually get caught. Egley pulls down the rebound. Wallenbrook quickly into the offensive end. Game tied up for the first time tonight. Actually, it was tied once earlier at four. Down the lane comes Manning to score. Count the bucket, and she'll have a chance at a three-point play. Well, they've been working the right side of that lane and working it outside in, and you got to credit Ankeny because their inside players are really moving to find the opening in the zone. You see Maddie leads the team in steals. That's a good number at 46 in 19 ball games, so averaging more than two steals a game. Yeah, that's very good, and uh, when you see that, that just tells you that uh, a defender really anticipates very well, and that's how they get some of their steals. And so Ankeny with their biggest lead of the game, and you talk about anticipating, almost getting another one. Yeah, that's where you read the eyes of the passer and figure out where they're going to go with it and try to beat them through the passing lane. Inside two minutes of this first half. 
Quick spotted on the Hawkettes. And that one will go against Mullenbrook, and that will be her first. Ten fouls now called against the Hawkettes. Well, and I think if you're Marshalltown, you've got to continue to attack. And through the rest of this quarter, and then keep that same mindset when you come out for the third quarter. Hunt can pull her team within one of the sixth-ranked Hawkettes. Offensive rebound momentarily grabbed by Lockhart, taken back by Manning, and then Lockhart fouls trying to give it back. And is that her third as well? It was. And so Lockhart with three, and Gaffney, who's not played for a long time after picking up her third foul. With Long rebound right there, and Lockhart loses it, and then just comes in from behind and tried to tie up the basketball, but uh, not a great angle to come in and try to tie it up. Maddie Manning looks for her fourth point of the night. And Marshalltown keeps the rebound alive. Nice job hustling in there to knock away by Gimble and allow her team to retrieve it. So Marshalltown ties it with a two, takes the lead with a three, but again, they've not taken many threes. They try one there, won't go, and the rebound is taken by Mullenbrook. Well, Van Meter was open in the, in the corner, and... Hay was able to make the nice spin move to clear herself away from the defense. Just could not get that one to fall. She's been hot from there, not this time. Mullenbrook has hit two from about that spot on the floor. And the Bobcats call for a foul, which will send Ankeny to the line with 108 left to play in the first half. The foul called on Gimble. That's her third. She becomes the third Bobcat with three fouls. Now that's... Uh, that's a lot of foul trouble for Marshalltown right now, and they're going to have to figure out how to adjust to that. And uh, probably going to have to sit in that zone, but you're going to have to be very smart about what you do defensively. Andrew back into the lineup for the Hawkeyes as Pettipier hits the first free throw. Good size at 6-1, only a freshman, has already 17 blocks this year. The rebound is taken by Gimble. As we go to the final minute of this first half, an Ankeny team that on paper seemed to be a lopsided favorite in this ballgame, but Marshalltown has battled them tooth and nail, and that shot the bank by Hay makes it a tie ball game at 29. Well, Hunt took it way inside and got collapsed down on, was able to kick it out for the three. Pettifier answers for Ankeny. Well, that's how you break the pressure. You make some good passes, you shoot somebody down the opposite side of the lane and get him open. Hey, really making the most of her senior night. 14 first half points for Marshalltown. And it's Hay with the basketball there, the left-hander. And a turnover by the Bobcats. A palm will give the ball to the Hawkeyes with 22 seconds on the first half clock. Now, if you're Marshalltown, that's not what you needed right there. You probably could have held the ball for the last shot and... Uh, now Ankeny's going to get a crack at the last shot. Bobcats have played mostly zone, but in a man defense now. Bonebrook down the lane, too hard off the glass, gets her own rebound, tries it again. Not this time, and the half comes to an end. And the Bobcats, a team that's only won three times, taking on the sixth-ranked team in the state and playing with them stride for stride. So we're at halftime at the Roundhouse in Marshalltown. The sixth-ranked Ankeny Hawkettes had the lead, but it's only two at 31-29. Half time at the Roundhouse, sixth-ranked Ankeny leading Marshalltown 31-29. Ankeny trailed by seven after a quarter. Outscored the Bobcats 17-8 in the second quarter as we take a look at our Boston's Pizza first half highlights. Well, I tell you what, uh, Marshalltown got it off, started off very quickly off the opening tip. Tara Hay got that opening tip, went in for the layup. They got the running game going, and nice pass out to Gaffney for the layup. And then a bank three-pointer by Hay late in the second quarter. Rihanna Eglick answers with the three-pointer from the top of the key, and... Then another three-pointer by Mullenbrook from the outside. A nice crossover dribble by uh, Kiera Bomben to get to the free throw line after the bucket. 
And so when we take a look at the numbers in the first half, we'll see that neither team shot it exceptionally well. No, neither team really did shoot it very well. And I think the thing that's really kept Marshalltown in the ball game is the free throws. They've gotten to the free throw line and done a pretty darn good job of, of converting those and they're winning the battle of the boards. And those turnovers were costly because they avoided them in the first quarter, but they came back to haunt them in the second quarter. Another thing to keep in mind, foul problem. Bomba, the leading score for Ankeny, has three, and three Marshalltown starters have three fouls. Second half coming up with Marshalltown trailing 31-29. At the Roundhouse, it's Ankeny ranked sixth in the state, playing for their 15th win of the year against a Bobcat team that is only 3-15, and 15, but stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with the sixth-ranked Hawkeyes in the first half. Let's take a look at our Dolls' keys to the game and see how it unfolded. Well, what Ankeny, we said they needed to do was get movement on offense, and against that 2-3 zone, they struggled a little bit, trying to finally solved it uh, a little bit later in the second quarter, take away the inside game, and... They've done that a little bit, but because of the running game, Marshalltown has been able to get inside and get those easy layups. And then for Marshalltown, avoid the drought. They did a pretty darn good job of that. They got off to a very quick start and uh, and then built that lead. Didn't really have that scoring drought in the second quarter and then pressure everywhere. They're really doing a nice job out of that zone, pressing and really keeping Ankeny out of a flow. And you know, they always talk about how important the first couple of minutes are of the third quarter. Certainly in a matchup like this, even more so. Yeah, I think so. And I, I think for both teams, if you're Ankeny, you want to try to jump on Marshalltown as quick as you can. See if you can take it at some of these players that have three fouls. Get them back to the bench. Try to build a lead. And if you're Marshalltown, you want to do the same thing. You want to play some good pressure defense. Ankeny with the first possession, but the over and back violation quickly puts it into the hands of the Bobcats, who can tie it with the two and take the lead with the three. Well, their defense was the big key in the first half, Marshalltown's was, and uh, they just caused another turnover there with, uh, with some good defense. This Bobcat team has lost nine games in a row since a win over Mason City in early January. But Tim Johnson says they've come to practice, they've worked hard every day, they've never given up, and tonight they are really playing well. Well, you have to credit this team. They've got a lot of heart, and... Uh, at this point in the season, knowing that tournament time's coming up, a lot of teams would already have thrown in the towel, and this team hasn't. They keep working hard each and every day. And this is the last week of the regular season. Yes, it is, and start into tournament time next week, and uh, these two teams have the potential to maybe meet up again in the second round of the uh, district play. Bombin had a good look, couldn't put it down, and now the Bobcats have a chance, and again, we talked about the early moments of the third quarter, and so far nobody's established anything. Hay has the basketball knocked away from her by Meisel. Bomb and a good ball handler uses that crossover. We saw her do that in the first quarter and able to convert. This time just came up a little short. You can see that she, she's very comfortable out on the wing. And so the Bobcats, once again, a chance to tie the sixth-ranked Hawkettes as Tara Hay brings the basketball outside, being harassed by Meisel. Gaffney wears number 30, sidled with three early fouls and didn't play much in that first half. The rebound comes down to Bombin. Ahead to Manning. Manning with the basket. And that's the first basket of the second half, and it takes a minute and 12 seconds for somebody to get one. Well, they were able to get out, and it was kind of a controlled type of run and able to get the good pass inside. Manning finished it off. That gives the Hawkettes their biggest lead. Marshalltown had an early nine-point advantage, three ties in the first half. Hay knocks down the shot, a three-pointer by Tara Hay to give her 17 points. You give her a little bit of room, maybe one dribble, let her get her feet set, she's going to knock that shot down all night long. Hay had a 29-point game against Indianola earlier this year. Manning gets in deep. Misses the shot, the rebound run down by Hay. Bobcats try to regain the lead. Yeah, smart move by holding the ball out and letting the rest of the team get down there. They had the numbers for a minute, but they didn't want to force anything, so nice job of holding up the ball by Emily Hunt. Again, I have really been impressed by their decision-making as Lockhart gets called for the travel. And Lockhart leaned in, trying to maybe draw a foul if she could, lowered that shoulder, but shuffled the feet. 
Tara Hay, a 5'7 senior on senior night. Big night for the Bobcats. Meanwhile, Aiken, he comes down and scores. Well, they're getting inside a little bit more regularly now here in the third quarter. Michael with her first basket of the night, and it gives Ankeny a lead of three. And a foul coming up against the Hawkettes. It'll be called on Bomb, but I believe, and if so, so, it's number four. There it is. Kiara Bomben, the leading scorer on the season for the Hawkettes, has her fourth foul. Well, that's a big foul right there because she is going to have to go to the bench, and Gaffney did a nice job of leaning in, drawing that contact. Again, Gaffney set out most of the first half with three early fouls after she got four quick points in the ball game. So Marsha Town loves having her back in there, and she pulls her team to within two. Here comes Bomb into the bench with that fourth foul. We've seen several players tonight get down low and lower that shoulder, and, and they're very good at it, and that's what you want to do when you get down low to try to draw contact. Get in there, muscle it up, and get the officials to call the foul. And it's a one-point game once again. Addie Mullenbrook is having her best game of the season. Back in the lineup for Ankeny. Down the lane comes Egley, and she gets fouled. Well, nice job by Egley, seeing a little bit of an opening. Good ball handling skills to get around the defense and get inside, get herself to the free throw line. And that'll be Lockhart with her fourth foul. So two key scores for each team with four fouls. Bombard on the bench for Ankeny, and Lockhart will go there in a moment, most likely, for Marshalltown as the free throw is hit by Egley, and that gives her eight points. Lockhart out, and in to take her place is Allison Gimble. She also has three fouls. Well, for both teams, that's not what you wanted to have happen to start here in the third quarter, have some key players go to the bench with that fourth foul. Egley, a 67% free throw shooter on the year, but four of four tonight. Marshalltown turnover, and the Hawkeyes have a chance to take their biggest lead of the game. Backcourt pressure by Ankeny that time, stepping it up a little bit. Not a whole lot of help for Tara Hay to get the inbounds pass. And the turnover is now starting to mount up for Marshalltown. Yeah, they've had three so far here in this uh, third quarter, and that leads to empty possessions. And, of course, Ankeny is a team that just is known for their ability to create turnovers as Manning gets inside, gets the foul, gets the basket, has a chance at a three-point play, and the Hawkettes with their biggest lead. Nice job by Manning, too, getting in there and hanging as she's double-teamed. And the foul on Gaffney is her fourth. So Tim Johnson's got a problem now because two of his starters have four fouls. Manning with a couple of baskets here in the third quarter as Ankeny has their biggest lead of the night at five. Hey, down the lane gets knocked off balance. Yeah, I do like Tara Hay and her ever-present energy. She really brings it, doesn't she? That's a kid that I think if you're playing a pickup game, you absolutely don't want to guard her. And you can see she tried to split the defenders, got bumped as she went through there and uh, lost her balance. Michael picked up the foul, and the team fouls are even at a pair. Hey, a deep three. And the rebound taken down by Manning. Manning has become a factor late in the second quarter and now here early in the third quarter. Yeah, she really has. She's making her presence known and bringing the ball down the floor even for Ankeny. Deshaun comes up with a rebound. Bobcats, every possession now crucial because for the first time they're playing from behind by five. And to have a chance to pull the upset tonight, they've obviously got to stay close through this third quarter and get it to the fourth, still close. Yeah, this is a big possession for them, and if they can convert here, that's going to keep their confidence level up. Hey, trying to hit Van Meter inside. Jill Starkenberg into the lineup for Ankeny, and Krista Penapier will leave. Gimble misses the shot. The rebound taken down by Manning, doing a nice job on the boards here in the third quarter. Well, she deflected that shot, got the rebound, brought the ball to the floor. Offensive foul against the Hawkettes. And the ball goes back to the Bobcats with 3.56 to go in the third quarter. That foul on Starkenberg was her second. And it's the fourth called against, make it the third, called on the Hawkettes. Tara Hay slides over, gets in good defensive position that time. 
Chung flips it back to Hay, who will bring it into the offensive end against Meisel. Meisel's making her work. That she is, and a pawning violation will give the ball back to the Hawkettes. And again, those turnovers now starting to really hurt the Bobcats. Yeah, they are, and uh, credit Meisel with that one, really making Tara Hay work to get the ball into the front court, and that's the second time she's caused a turnover like that. Egley outside, working on Hay. Manning flashing inside, calling for the ball. Egley looking inside for Manning, and there's a collision of what we have. We have a, a jump, ball? jump ball, yeah, tie ball, and the possession arrow will give it to the Bobcats. Well, against this 2-3 zone, they're doing a nice job of getting good interior passing to find those players on the block open. Great job of hustle by Egley. They tried to hit Van Meter quick, and Egley was in the way to mess up the play and come up with the steal. Mullenbrook with the miss, the rebound for Ankeny. Comes to Schalenberg, the shot won't go. And the ball will go to the Bobcats. With a foul called on Ankeny. And that time they got Starkenberg and that'll be her third foul. So Starkenberg with three and Bomben with four fouls for the Hawkettes for Marshalltown. Gaffney has four and Lockhart has four. Well with the rate that uh the fouls are piling up. There's more players on the Ankeny bench than there are the Marshalltown bench, so if it comes down to it, it may be a war of attrition. And we have a timeout with exactly three minutes left to play in the third quarter. We'll take a break. The sixth-ranked Ankeny Hawkeyes have their biggest lead of the night at 39-34. to 34. Three minutes to go in the third, and it's a five-point lead for Ankeny. We take a look at the 4A top 10, and it's full of CIML teams. Yeah, it really is. Good basketball being played here in the uh, central Iowa area, but uh, Linmar right on top, undefeated. But then you can see East right in there, Ames, Ankeny, Johnston, Waukee is uh, number 10. So a lot of good basketball to be played here in the area. It's going to be interesting to see how the rank, or not how the rankings, but how the brackets uh, pan out and who's gonna come out of each one of those uh, brackets. Mullenberg a moment ago picking up a foul and a three shot from the corner nailed by Nicole Pashong. Her first points of the game, but they're huge because they pull her team back to within two. That could be the boost that the Bobcats needed. Egley for three, a quick answer for the three of Marshalltown by Rihanna Egley, her 12th point. That's a big answer by Egley that time. Nobody came out, she just stayed at the top of the key. She hit one from there earlier in this ball game and they didn't come out to get a hand in the face. What a great year Ankeny has had in athletics with their football team going to the championship game, their volleyball team winning state for the second time in three years and this basketball team a definite contender to go to state. Yeah, I think they really are. Hey, off balance, misfires on the shot. The ball goes out of bounds. It was last touch by the Hawkeyes. But I think you've kind of come to expect that from Ankeny Athletics. Absolutely. Egley just towing the line and calmly knocks it down. Good form out there. Her dad, Tom, used to play basketball at Drake, I believe, before the three-point era, wasn't it? Or close? I think it was before. I think it was before the three-point era. Not much before, no. but... No, but I'm sure they've, they've had some lessons uh, on the home court. Shot won't go by Hay, and the scrap for the rebound results in a foul called against Marshalltown. Hay with her second foul. Thirteenth foul called against Marshalltown, while well, Ankeny's already been called for six. This Marshalltown team that normally has not shot free throws well has shot free throws well tonight. So that could be a factor down the stretch. Yeah, it really could. And uh, this Marshalltown team hovering right around the 60% mark from the free throw line. And uh, they're doing a much better job of knocking those shots down tonight. Good look inside to Manning. Can't hang on to the ball. Last touch by Marshalltown. Head up here and Meisel back into the lineup for Scott DeYoung and leaving the lineup will be Egley and Andrew. 
last few times down the floor, they've been able to get Manning open underneath. So look for him to continue to go inside. Manning, a six foot freshman, so good size, and she's got some fine ability to move when she gets the ball inside. Well, she's playing out on the wing right now. She can handle the ball, but so she's got all aspects of the game covered. How about that shot by another freshman, Starkenberg? What a shot. That was a great shot, a little turnaround jumper off the glass. Biggest lead of the night for Ankeny, a quick shot on a miss by Van Meter. Hawkettes bring it the other way. And a foul called as Meisel tries to go down the lane, and she will go to the free throw line. Look at the nice footwork on the inside by Starkenberg. Gets up against the defense, sees the double team come, spins the other way. He will now leave the lineup for the Bobcats with this final minute of the third quarter. And Tim Johnson wants to get his outstanding score, a little extra rest for the fourth period. That just the fourth foul called against the Bobcats, so no shooting there. 16 fouls called against Ankeny. Well, they're gonna, there's that gap right there, and they've been exploiting that all game long and just couldn't convert there. Manning was just a little short off the front rim. Gimble with the rebound. The Bobcats with 30 seconds to go in this third quarter. Down by seven, biggest deficit of the night. They don't look like they're playing for the last shot, and maybe they should have because they lose it as they did to end the second quarter. Yeah, every time they've gone down low on the baseline, that double team comes, and they've had trouble getting that pass out of that double team. Manning for three. Coming out with a rebound is Hunt in the third quarter draws to a close. So the sixth ranked Ankeny Hawkettes open a seven point lead at the end of three periods in Ankeny 44 and Marshalltown 37. Ankeny with a 44 37 lead after three quarters of play. In the Central Conference, Ankeny a win away from clinching their second consecutive Central Conference title. Well, they're usually in the running most every year, and Johnston hot on their heels with those two losses, but uh, Ankeny ready to clinch again. They've got a game at Southeast Polk on Friday. That's where they can clinch on what is their last game of the regular season. Like these two teams could hook up again in the regionals the way the brackets are drawn. Yeah, Ankeny could play the winner or will play the winner because they get the bye. They will play the winner of Waterloo East and Marshalltown. And taking it to the rack is Tara Hay for her 19th point. Just with that little bit of extra rest uh, does for you when you get that last minute of the quarter to get to the bench, take a little extra rest. You can rev your motor again. Crowd wanted a walk called against Meisel. Take a look at shooting in the second half. Well, you can see that Ankeny shooting it a little bit better here in the second half, and Marshalltown not getting off as many shots as they would like. Hey, with a 17, make it a 19-point night. Nice lob inside from Hay, but unable to complete it is Gimble, and here come the Hawkettes with 6.45 to play. Well, that was a great curl cut and a great pass, and uh, Gimble just couldn't get the shoulder square to get a good angle. The Hawkettes looking for their 15th win of the year. They've won six of their last seven. Their low loss in that period was a week ago tonight when they lost the third ranked East by three at 34-31. Well, and Manning had a big game in that one. She had 12 points and shot it pretty well from the floor. Six of 12 from the floor. Gibble with a foul, her fourth. When you look at this Ankeny team, it is just amazing when you look at their size and their youth. Two freshman starters and four of their top six, or four of their top eight players are freshmen. You saw Manning, one of their talented freshman class. Well, as I, I said, you know, earlier, you look at this roster and you go, oh, they're going to rebuild, they're young, they're going to have some growing pains, and, and that's not true at all. This group has really gelled together and played very well, and we saw last couple possessions uh, before 
down the floor, the great passing and the great team chemistry that they have. Bennett Peer at the line. She's a freshman at 6'1". Manning is a freshman at six foot, so they have youth and they have size. And that's the thing that impressed me the most is that they're big. They're, they do have that size. Sometimes you, you see a good mix of perimeter players and interior players, but I think some of these kids, as we've seen uh, from Manning, she can play both inside and out, so they're very versatile as well. Mullenbrook and Starkenberg off the bench for Ankeny, the other freshmen who see considerable playing time. So yes, the future is always bright at Ankeny, it seems, with the team coached by Scott DeYoung, and certainly even brighter now than it's been for a while. No, it really, uh, really is, and uh, you've got to be impressed with the way they've come on this season. And Bomba with four fouls, who's only scored four, nine less than her average, back onto the floor for the Hawkettes. Meisel gets it to Pettifier. They have such great spacing on offense, and... Uh, know exactly where to move the ball and where to move with the ball, especially the interior players. Foul number three on Tara Hay. And again, the turnovers, a big factor that's enabled Ankeny to get back in this ball game after they trailed 21-14 after a quarter. Then you go back to the field goal shooting and you looked at the number of attempts that uh, Marshalltown had. They've had fewer attempts because they have been turning over the basketball. That foul goes against Ankeny, and the ball goes back to the Bobcats. Meisel with her second foul. And that's the seventh called on Hawkettes. And now's an opportunity, a lot of time left for Marshalltown to get to the free throw line, score some points, and as you had mentioned, not a great free throw shooting team, but tonight they have been doing the job. And Van Meter continues that trend. So when I say those things, then somebody misses a free throw. I know, you say I, they just continue the trend. <laughs> I was holding my breath. <laughs> but you know, isn't it interesting how you have a team that over the course of a season, shooting just a little over 60% from the line and then come into a game like this tonight and shoot it very well. Well, here's a team averaging 43 points a game. They've got 41 against one of the better defensive teams in the state. That's what's, to me, equally amazing. Well, and that uh, just has to give them some uh, grounds to build on going into this tournament season. Bomba draws the foul as she takes it to the rack. Lockhart commits her fifth. So there's a huge loss for Marshalltown. In fact, the fact that she couldn't play much in the second half is a huge loss. She got eight points in the first quarter, averages 11, so she's one of their big scorers, and they just didn't hamper at all in the second half. Now she picked up that fourth foul early on in the third quarter and had to sit and then just got back into this ball game only a couple trips up and down the floor and picks up number five. Bombin with five points tonight for Ankeny and again she has been saddled with fouls. The difference is she talked about it earlier. Ankeny has a better depth situation to overcome a key player in foul trouble. Well, that's just it. Uh, they have a lot of versatile players over there and that can play a lot of different positions. So if you do get in foul trouble, if you're Ankeny, you have a lot of people to pick from over there on the bench. Despite those foul problems, here's Marshalltown within four points of the sixth-ranked Hawkettes with just over five to play. Well, and here's a situation where you might see Tara Hay try to take over the game. She got her defender into the air, instead kicks it out, and the shot is drilled by Nicole Pashong. Another high-arching shot from Pashong, and nothing but net. But the Bobcats really impressive tonight against the sixth-ranked team in the state. Well, they definitely have some athletes, and uh, they've got some good shooters, and everything's clicking for them tonight. Fed up here with nine, four better than her average, and a four-point lead for the Hawkettes. Gaffney on the spin move, gets her own rebound, tries it again, this time she nails it. Well, as we said earlier, she always gets a lot of second chance opportunities. You can see, got great position, stayed after it, knew that shot was gonna be short. And the block, and the jump ball forced by the defense of Nicole Pichon. 
And the Bobcats get it on the possession arrow. Nice pump fake, spin move, tries to go between two defenders, but stayed right after it, got it off the glass. Timeout in what has been a most entertaining and well-played basketball game. We've got 4-11 to go, and Ankeny with a two-point lead at 47-45. to And again, there was just nothing in the team's past records that would indicate we should have this kind of a ball game. No, absolutely not. And uh, you got to credit Marshalltown coming in here. Maybe it's you know, a little bit to do with senior night. They want to send their seniors out on a high note, seniors ready to play, and fans behind them. And so maybe that has a little to do with it. But I'll tell you what, uh, Marshalltown's playing great defense, kind of had Ankeny off balance all night. And Marshalltown, great job at the free throw line, 16 out of 20 from the foul line. Well, coming up on Wednesday night, it's the Iowa State Cyclones hoping to pull off a home court win against Colorado. The Big 12 Conference has not been kind to the Cyclones this season, but hopefully ISU can find a hot hand and a touch of Hilton Magic to get back in the win column. The game will be televised on ABC in Central Iowa and on Mediacom Connections across the state. 4-11 to play. Marshalltown bidding for what would be one of the biggest upsets in the CIML this year. But the Hawkeyes, even though they're a young team, they've got enough experience on this ball club. They've been in these situations before, and Maddie Manning is a freshman who's not playing like one in the second half. No, she isn't. She's doing a nice job of uh, really directing the offense when she gets the ball she gets it down into the front court in a hurry Pettipier will go to the line as a result of a good pass Bashan with her first foul eighth team foul now called on the Bobcats Pettipier who a moment ago missed a couple of free throws 64% on the season 10 points tonight in the ball game becomes the second double-figure scorer, along with Egley, who has 12 points for the Hawkettes. Well, the second half, Ankeny has continued to attack inside, and this was no exception. They got the ball to Pettipier, and were able to draw another foul on Marshalltown. Gaffney with a big rebound. Hay being harassed by Meisel. Hay takes it inside, goes through the defenders, misses the shot, and then a foul called on Hay as she tries to get the ball back as she foul Bombin. Hay was taking the ball to the left side. The two defenders came down, and she made that spin move, had a wide open layup, just overshot it, and then picks up her fourth foul. You can see the old lane open wide right there, overshot it, and then just a frustration foul trying to strip that basketball from Bombin. Bombin, who averages nearly eight rebounds a game, had a big ball game earlier this year against Southeast Polk, a 31-point, 15-rebound performance. Big trip down the floor, interrupted by the Eggly steal. And a foul on Pashong trying to get it back. Now Pashong threw the ball that was intercepted. They had the turnover. And then she's trying to get in position to strip the basketball. And she gave up her body for that one. That she did. Wow. You think she ever hit her brother like that, maybe, in a front yard <laughs> football game? And he couldn't hit back, of course. <laughs> 13 for Rihanna Eglick. I think she's still kind of shaking out some of the cobweb. Yeah, that was quite a collision. As you see, perfect at the free throw line tonight. Six of six now, 14 points. Ankeny by five. Tim Johnson has to be proud of his team's effort. 321 to play, and he would love to see his team pull the upset as they enter the last week of the season and get ready for regional play and very likely another return engagement against these Hawkettes. Ball knocked out of bounds by Van Meter. The last couple times down the floor, Marshalltown has spread the floor, looking like they're going to try to run that weave up top, but they have not made very good passes. Two consecutive turnovers. Three minutes to play. Ankeny with the ball and a five-point lead. Nice spin move by Bombin. Bombin just uses her strength and power that time. Got the ball mid lane and made the nice move to the hoop. She's really a terrific offensive player. Didn't get to see it a lot tonight because of her foul problems. Yeah, 
time. She definitely has some moves, and she's got a great mid-range game, can take the ball right to the hoop, and we've seen her go inside and draw contact as well. Bob Getz trying to break a nine-game losing streak. We'll take a timeout with 2.31 to play, down by seven, and what Tim Johnson obviously knows is a crucial possession. This is a crucial possession. They need to score right here if they want to try to keep Ankeny within their sights and so this is they're going to draw something up to see if they can get a good quick shot. Well the final CIML game of the week comes your way this Saturday as Fort Dodge travels to Valley for an Iowa conference clash. The Valley girls team needs a win to stay in second place in the conference while the boys teams are battling for the fourth spot in the rugged Iowa division of the CIML. It's Fort Dodge and Valley in the season finale of the CIML game of the week. Hunt fires a long shot off the front of the iron. Gaffney scrambling for the rebound along with Bombin. And it was Gaffney who touched it last. So Ankeny will have the ball. Or no, he take it back. It was Bombin who touched it last. And there's Bombin coming up with a steal. Well, they tried to lob it inside to Gaffney. Tried to get a quick hitter. And Ankeny defense right there. Now the Hawkettes spread the court, trying to sit on the seven-point lead. Well, smart move by Ankeny, and uh, Scott DeYoung decided, hey, we've had enough, we've had a big battle, and let's hold on to this basketball. That was the plan, but in the way is Emily Hunt. And she traveled with it. The crowd doesn't like the call. Hunt called for the travel and goes back to the Hawkettes. Well, that was a nice hustle play by Hunt. She went after the loose ball, kind of came in from behind, and strip that ball and boy I don't know I, I she stayed stationary and got that ball off to a teammate tough call obviously the home crowd did not like it and the Hawks back into the we Hawkettes back into the weave bomb it sees an opening takes it right to the rack and will go to the foul line well, the Shang on the foul and you have the opportunity to read the defense when you're spreading the floor like that and Bombin saw the opening and took to the hoop and Pashang right over to just hammer and that's what you want to do you don't want to give up the easy shot Bombin with an 4.4th quarter to give her eight points in the ball game and she knocks down both of her free throws to give her nine Gaffney into the lane, banks it home. We got to figure Marshall Town's going to come up and get a little pressure on. The last time that this Marshall Town team scored more than 46 points in a ball game, they got 65 in a win at Hoover. But tonight, against one of the better defensive teams in the state, they piled up 47. And they've got to be pretty pleased with that performance, and they're still going after it. And uh, see if they can kind of climb back into this game, see if they can cause a few more turnovers. Their problem right now is having to put a very good Ankeny free throw shooting team on the line. And that's great ball movement by Ankeny. They spread the floor that time and got the defense out of position and were able to find the open player. And Manning on the weak side, she got her shot blocked, but Bombin right there. Hunt's foul, sending Kiara Bombin to the line. Down to a minute and 11 to play. Marshalltown with three timeouts remaining and Ankeny with two. Gaffney rebounds. Hay will bring it up the court in a hurry. They clear it for her. She'll put the shot up and the rebound taken by Fashon, but just ripped away from her by Pettipier. By, by Manning, excuse me. Well, they wanted to get the quick shot, and uh, Tara Hay went inside, got that. She's got such a quick release. She got that up in a hurry, couldn't get it to fall, and then Ankeny cleaning the boards. And so Manny Manning will go to the line with a foul called on Emily Hunt. Manning, big factor in this Ankeny second-half effort. Not 
asking themselves at the free throw line. They could have extended this lead a little bit more. Yeah, chance to put it away, but they've not been able to do so. So this is twice now that they have missed back-to-back -back free throws down the stretch. Hay takes it right to the rack, does not get the roll. Pashong fights for the rebound, but taken away from her by Bombin, rather by Egley, and she gets fouled. Now Tara Hay a little upset with herself because she couldn't get that shot to fall, but she can't be too upset. She's done a nice job tonight and is able to get herself to the rim, just could not finish it off the last couple of times down the floor. That's right. The sixth-ranked Hawkettes are going to prevail, but the Bobcats have to feel very good about the effort that they put forth tonight. Absolutely, and I think there's some momentum that you can build on going into the last regular season game as well as going into your first round against uh, Waterloo East. Egley with 16 points on the night to lead the Hawkettes in scoring. Hay with 19 leading the way for Marshalltown, but Ankeny's defense really clamped down on her in the second half. 15 of those points came, rather 14 of those points came in the first half. And the turnover will give it back to the Hawkettes with 33 seconds to go. Uh, that's not what Marshalltown needed at that point. They needed to get a quick shot off and then get back and play a little defense or foul. And Manning will go to the line. And I think Manning lost the contact in that one as well. I think it popped right out. And she's going over to the bench to get a little saline on that. You know, it's been very rare that teams have scored more than 40 points on Ankeny. And just as a quick look, this is the third most points they've given up. They gave up 56 in a loss at Valley earlier this year and 52 in a loss at Roosevelt. This looks to be the third most points they've given up this year. Well, that says something about the mindset of Marshalltown coming into this ball game. They wanted to try to pull the upset, and they did the best job that they could possibly do here tonight. They're going to come up a little bit short, but not taking anything away from what's been a terrific effort by the Bobcats. But the Ankeny Hawkettes, their young, talented team, is going to prevail and win their 15th ball game of the year. Marshalltown will go to 3-16. and 16. But again, you get the feeling that maybe Ankeny wouldn't be thrilled about seeing this team again down the road in the regionals. Well, probably not, because they have really given them a tough ball game here, and you got to figure that's who they're going to prepare for and uh, figure that they're going to come out of that bracket and see them again here in about another week or so. Emily Hunt bearing the shot for the Bobcats. So the Ankeny Hawkettes had a struggle tonight, but they prevailed by a score of 57 to 49 over a very determined Marshalltown team on senior night here in the roundhouse. Again, the final score, Ankeny 57 and Marshalltown 49. And certainly for Marshalltown, great effort, and a great effort by our player of the game, Tara Hay. Now, Tara Hay did everything she could to try to pull off the upset and uh, knock down some three-pointers, played some good defense, got herself out on the run, set her teammates up, and you can see 19 points, couple rebounds, had a great shooting percentage from the floor here tonight. And so Tara Hay is our line X player of the game. The sixth rank Hawkeyes win it by a score of 57 to 49. We'll be back at the Roundhouse right after these words. Tonight, CIML basketball.